Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today is April 8, the year 2020, the year of our Lord. Uh, that's what A.D. means. B.C. means before Christ, and A.D. means uh, Anno Domino, or uh, annual as in year, which is, you know, it's Latin. And Domino, uh, or Dominus, or, well, something like that. I, 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 did, I flunked Latin in uh, school. Actually, I never took it, but yeah. But uh, uh, the Domino, or Domino, or whatever, however they pronounce it, means uh, dominion, dominate. And that's what Christ will do one day. But if you ever see uh, the dating system uh, CE, you know, Charlie Echo, Charlie Echo CE, it means the common era, as in the birth of Christ was something common. I say it was uncommon. I say it's never happened, bef uh, be had never happened before and will never happen after again. A virgin gave birth. And if you see BCE, it means before the common era. And if you see that, you know you are dealing with an antichrist. Just keep that in mind. Um, I haven't finished the knowledge series yet, but I thought I would do the life of John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Get your King James Bible, turn to the book of Luke. And uh, he had a very interesting and short life. Herod, King Herod, who was, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian, Herod was of, uh, of Esau Edom. He was an Edomite where Esau married into the Hittite Canaanite line, seed line, what I, some of us call the satanic seed line. But people don't want to believe that. Oh no, anybody can be saved. All they got to do is believe in Jesus. And that's why God said in uh, when Israel went into the land of Canaan to kill them all. Kill them all. Because... You know, believing men marry unbelieving women and have giants for children with six fingers and six toes. Yeah. And then God says, kill them all. Yeah. Yeah. They turn the Bible into a fairy tale. It's no wonder that the faith is dying, almost dead. There's a verse in the Bible that says, when uh, Christ says, when I... Uh, when I shall return, shall I find faith? I guess it's a rhetorical question. In the book of Luke, chapter 18, and verse 8, we read, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Good question. Will he? Yeah. Will he? All right, let's go to the book of Luke. Luke was a physician. In chapter 1 and verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses, and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus. So here is P Luke is writing to a guy named Theophilus. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, 
the king of Judea. Now, from what I understand, according to history, uh, somebody in the Herod family had helped uh, Caesar in some kind of a war. And I I'm not exactly sure how the story goes. Some say he rescued him or something or other. I, I don't know. But uh, Caesar was indebted to Herod and knew that he was to be somewhat trusted. So he gave him, allowed him to be the king or the ruler of Judea. So there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias. Now, to be a priest, you had to be of the tribe of Levi. Levi, there were 12 tribes in Israel. Levi was but one tribe. They were the tribe of the priests. They were to the, be the ones that served the Lord in the tabernacle. They were the only tribe that was not given a portion of land. And the tithe for the other 11 tribes was to support the tribe of Levi. That's what That was the whole purpose of the tithe, believe it or not. So when you get these preachers saying, oh, tithe, 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 tell them to prove that they're of the tribe of Levi. Because the tithe was for the tribe of Levi, no one else. Of course, they can't do it. So that makes them, well, they can't prove it. And there's more chances out or not that they're possibly liars. I don't know. Now, Judah was the tribe of the kings. They were the civil rulers. Whereas Levi was the rulers of the Bible things. Uh, the book of Leviticus was for the tribe of Levi. It told them how to serve the Lord in the temple. Well, not the temple, but the tabernacle, which eventually became the temple. So, Zacharias was of the tribe of Levi. All right, so, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now, who was Aaron? Aaron was a Levite, and he had a brother. His brother's name was Moses. Maybe you've heard of him. Verse 6. And that's my sad attempt at a joke, people. So, And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the, ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed, performed, the priest's office before God in the order of his course, uh, from what I understand, uh, the Levites would take turns doing their duties. So, you know, if you lived in one place, you'd have to walk or ride the horse or donkey or camel or whatever to go to Jerusalem and um, do your priestly duties. And from what I understand, it would be like a month on, and then you would have time off, and then somebody else would do it for a month and then time off. I'm not exactly sure how it works if if it's like every other month or every third month or every fourth month. I don't know how that works. But all I know is he wasn't constantly at the temple. So, uh, and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office. His lot, his job, was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. 
And I guess that's what they mean by holy smoke, right? Holy smoke! And I'm not trying to be sacrilegious. But. And when Zacharias... Uh, okay. Alright, so he's burning incense. Verse 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Yeah, I think I'd be troubled too. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name yo 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 No. No, my, my Bible says, and thou shalt call his name John. You know, just like uh, Gabriel went to uh, Mary and said, thou shalt call his name Jesus. You know, all these Yeshua people, you know, basically they're denying the Bible. Do you know that? They deny the New Testament. When they say Yeshua, they're denying the New Testament. Really. You think about it. Oh, there was no J in Hebrew, so he couldn't, his name couldn't possibly have been John or Jesus. And I guess Jews don't exist either because there's no J, right? Oh, and Jerusalem doesn't exist either. Grab them by the throat and smack them a few times. Knock some sense into those th skulls. I, I don't even think they could be dealt with. Personally, I think most of them are deceivers, but hey, what can I tell you? That's just one guy's opinion. And I'm not the judge. And they're lucky I'm not the judge. Of course, if I was the judge and judged me in high school, I'd have probably struck me down dead, but yeah. All right, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Many, not all, not all. John's going to be a, a thorn in the side for a lot of people. Verse 15, listen to this. For he shall be great, he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Wow. Uh, not drinking alcohol is kind of a that was part of the uh nazarene or nazarite vow and he's going to be filled with the holy ghost even from his mother's womb i think he was filled with the holy ghost even when he was inside her womb but don't quote me on that because i could be wrong but we'll see 17, and he shall go before him, before who? The Christ. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Well, who, what is Elias? Who's Elias? Who, what is Elias? Elias is the Greek rendering of Elijah. I have a one hour and 40 minute study on Elijah the prophet, and believe me, it is, and I'm trying to be humble here, it, it's a worthy study. I mean, when I was in Bible college, uh, we had an assignment. We had to pick a prophet, our favorite prophet in the Bible, and do a report on him. I picked Elijah. Elijah was, boy, what a, what a powerful, yeah, he was pretty powerful uh, in, 
in his faith of the Lord. He wasn't powerful in his own power, but I mean, he was powerful. Uh, well, he had power with God in his faith and everything. And there's only two people that never died in the Bible. Elijah's one of them. Enoch is the other. Elijah uh, confronted the prophets of Baal uh, under a King Ahab and Jezebel. Perhaps you've heard of Ahab and Jezebel. Jezebel was bad news, dog. Let me tell you something. She was bad news. Ahab was bad, but Jezebel was worse. And Elijah confronted them, and he it didn't rain for three and a half years. You know what happens in three and a half years when you don't have any rain? There ain't no crops, bu buddy boy. Nothing. What are your what is your what are your animals going to eat? That you know the cows, the cattle, and you know what are they going to eat? Dust. Yeah. There was no wheat. There was no corn. You know the fruit trees aren't going to be putting out any fruit. The nut trees aren't going to be putting out any nuts. You're in big trouble. And uh, he called fire from down from the sky and devoured, oh, I don't know, two, two groups of 50 soldiers with their captain, 51. Twice. Elias, man, let me tell you something. Oof, that, that's a great study. And he shall go before him, Christ, in the spirit and power of Elias. You see, some people thought, uh, we'll get to this more later, but there are people that teach that John the Baptist is Elijah, or Elias, which is the Greek spelling and rendering of Elijah. And it's not true. It can't be true. Because if John the Baptist was Elijah reborn, then that means reincarnation is true. And the Bible teaches clearly, it is appointed unto man once to die and after this to judgment. And Elijah has yet to come back. And that is in Hebrews 9.27. Oh, and you know what? The book of Hebrews does not have an author attributed to it. I think it was Paul, but my, your guess is as good as mine. But in Hebrews 9.27, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And it's talking about dying in the flesh. So, now in the book of Malachi, chapter 4, Malachi is one of those minor prophets, minor in size, not minor in importance. They call them the minor prophets because of the size, not, not because of how important they are. I know I've said it a bunch of times, but there is a bunch of prophecy in those minor prophets and they are neglected books and if you're interested I did an entire uh, series on my playlist on the minor prophets if YouTube hasn't deleted them more you know I was going through my um, community page where I was posting a bunch of videos and stuff I was surprised. This video is uh, unavailable. This video is unavailable. 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 I counted like six or seven. Now, they weren't not my work. They were other people's work that I posted. But they're gone. And I've been go I went through my playlist. I had like 20-something, 20 22-some, or somewhere around there, uh, videos in a playlist. Four or five or six of my videos were deleted. Yeah, it's terrible. So, and there's nowhere to go. Gab is a bust. They're all a bust. And when I get caught up, I'm going to go to Telegram, and I'm going to be uh, banning a bunch of people. 
they've took over my telegram site and posting a bunch of stupid stuff and arguing and fighting and calling each other names i if i wasn't so busy i'd i'd have done it already but as long as youtube's up i'm good to go so let's go to malachi uh chapter four malachi is one of those books just before the new testament before matthew malachi 4 and 1 for behold the day cometh what day the day of the lord the day of christ and if you listen to demon nominational preachers they'll tell you that the day of the lord and the day of christ is two different days thus denying that jesus christ is lord my opinion now they're the same day the day of the lord and the day of christ is the same and jesus christ is lord for behold the day cometh that shall burn burn as an oven and all the proud yea and all that do wickedly shall be stubble what is stubble stubble is worthless stuff that you like of plants you know when you're growing a food plant like wheat well you want the wheat kernels the the, the seeds but the rest of the plant is stubble it's good for nothing you burn it you get rid of it and all that do wickedly shall be stubble and the day that cometh shall burn them up when the lord comes back there's going to be a whole bunch of fire people and i did a video series a playlist on fire for believers fire is going to be a cleansing thing for the unbelievers it's going to be destruction yeah and the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the lord of hosts and it shall leave them neither root nor branch but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall and ye shall tread down the wicked oh i love this verse i love this verse and ye shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes well that's what usually happens when something gets burned up you know there's ashes and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Listen carefully. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Now remember, Elijah was taken up into heaven in a whirlwind of chariots of fire, chariots and horses of fire. Taken up to heaven in front of his, uh, his fellow servant, his fellow prophet, Eli, uh, Elisha, S-H-A, E-L-I-S-H-A, Elisha, not Elijah, they sound a little similar, but yeah. But the Lord says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful. It's going to be dreadful for the wicked. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he, Elijah, shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Elijah is going to be one of those two witnesses in Revelation that goes to Jerusalem and confronts the false prophet. And I'm of the opinion the false prophet is going to claim to be Elijah returned. That's my guess. I think there's going to be two people running around claiming to be Elijah. The real and the fake. And if you want to study that more off, you can, I got an hour and 40 minutes study on that. I'm just, this is just the introduction. Now, remember in Luke, 
117. And he, John the Baptist, and he shall go before him, Christ, in the spirit and power of Elias, Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Didn't we just read that in Malachi? Yeah, we did. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John the Baptist's sole purpose was to prepare a people for the Lord, Jesus Christ. Verse 18. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. Uh, you know, there's a difference between how you say it, uh, what you say, and how you say it. Angel, what are you talking about? I'm old, and my wife is old too. Don't you know anything about human anatomy and biology? We're too old to have children. What are you talking about? Uh, that's the Bob transliteration. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel. Oh, boy. You know, Gabriel is, uh, Gabriel and Michael are the only two angels in the Bible that are mentioned by name. Well, I don't know if Lucifer is actually a name, but, you know, I think it's more of a title, but I don't know. All I know is when Gabriel talks, you better listen. Gabriel is the angel, I, I think, I'm sure it's an, an archangel, that's charged with looking out for his people Israel. A, Gabriel's only mentioned, I think... I think three times in the Bible. This here in Luke, uh, once when he appears unto Mary, and when he appears unto Daniel in the book of Daniel. I believe that's correct. I could be wrong, but I think it, those are the only times he's he's mentioned. So he's like a, what they called a herald. Um uh, a herald was the guy that went to the town square and blew the horn. Doo, doo, doo. Hey, hear ye, hear ye. The king decrees this and that and the other. Pay attention. So, and the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Wow, God sent Gabriel to Zacharias to talk to him. And Zacharias is like, dude, I'm an old guy and my wife, we can't have children. What are you talking about? Well, in verse 20, Gabriel says, And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Oof. Oh, yeah? I'm going to show you a little something, Zacharias. You're not going to be able to talk until, until the day that John the Baptist is born. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. So, you know, whatever the duties were for whatever time period, whether it was for 30 days or 60 days, you know, he he did his, what they call a rotation, and he got relieved by somebody else. Then, you know, his work was done for the time, and he goes home. And after those days, his wife, Elizabeth, conceived. Oh, okay. She conceived 
and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. You see, being childless was considered a curse from God. Yeah. It was a reproach. Verse 26. And in the sixth month, now remember, Mary is five months pregnant here. Verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Now, who was David? King David. And King David was not a Levite. He was of the tribe of Judah. Hmm. Think about that. Christ is related directly through the line of David, as reckoned by the Father. But actually, God, God is his Father, but yeah. All right, so Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man. Espoused is basically, um, well, if you look, uh, it says spouse. You take the E and then you got S-P-O-U-S-E. -S spouse, you know, spouse can be male or female. Espoused means basically engaged to be married. To a virgin... Boy, they don't like the virgin birth. There's a, you know, there's a whole bunch of people will tell you that the virgin birth is uh, not true. Yeah, they want you to think that Joseph was, uh, uh, well, no, actually, they don't say Joseph was uh, Jesus's daddy. They say his his daddy was a Roman soldier named Pantera, who uh, impregnated a prostitute named Mary. And I don't think I have to tell you uh, what group it is that uh, does that. If you're not sure, take a look at the book of Revelation. Uh, go to Revelation chapter 2. And uh, then you can go to verse number um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then you can uh, figure out what group it is that uh, says that stuff. Yeah, he paid... Pantera paid Mary, uh, I forget how many pieces of silver, I think it was 20, and impregnated Mary and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, but uh, the book of Titus tells us not to pay attention to their little fables. So, Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And I think I would rather believe the Bible than people that spread fables. But hey, that's just me. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Salutation. Uh, it's a greeting. It's where they get the word uh, in the military for salute. A salutation. You know, your, your greeting. When you salute an officer, you're Acknowledging his presence. So she's like, she's troubled at his saying, and she's wondering in her mind, what, what, what is going on here? Verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, 
For thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. I don't see Yeshua HaMashiach there, and I'm not sorry. You know, those, those Hebrew roots people, they are, they, they deny, they deny the Greek New Testament. They really do. And I hope, I hope the Lord sends them their ha, ya, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah, I think that's what the, uh, the Antichrist is going to call himself. You watch. The man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast of revelation. You watch. That's what he'll probably call himself. Or they'll call him. Even Yeshua has come. Oy vey. And our prophet Elijah. Yeah. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, Judah, the king tribe, the throne. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Period. Read about that in the 20s, uh, chapter 20, 21, 22 in Revelation. All right, now Mary's getting ready to ask a question. Compare this to Zacharias. You know, Zacharias is like, dude, the wife and I are old. We can't have children. We're old. Don't you know that? But Mary's different. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She's not doubting. She's just asking, How is this going to happen? How, how is this going to come to pass? I haven't been with a man. 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, that holy thing which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Hmm. You know, there's people who will tell you, oh, well, God, uh, basically God is raping Mary here. I've heard that stuff. But you know what? Mary probably probably made a vow that's not in the Bible, but she might have probably, very possible that she made a vow saying, Lord, use me in any way that you wish. And the Lord probably took her up on that. Now, I'm not saying that definitely happened, but I believe that. God would not have forced Mary to do something she wasn't willing And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Hmm. The Son of God. You know, and if you listen to the, um, the Muslims... They'll tell you, oh, God has no son. Well, maybe their God doesn't have a son. But in the book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. The Lord hath said unto me, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Begotten. Very important word. 
So, yeah. Is there a New Testament witness to this? Yes. Acts 13, 33. God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second Psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. How about 1 John 4, 9? In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son, his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. Now, Adam is called a son of God. Well, these, he's called the, the son of God. But Jesus is called the only begotten son. Big difference. Big difference. So, in John 3, 18, He that believeth on him, believeth on who? On Jesus. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only, only begotten Son of God. Oh yeah. Big, big difference. Revelation 1.5, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Wow. Let's go back to Luke chapter 1. 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy, holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, I'm going to do this real quick. Jesus is called the only begotten Son of God. In Luke, I think it's Luke 3 or Luke chapter 4, when they're tracing back the genealogy of Christ, Adam is called the Son of God, because after all, God was his father. In Genesis 6 and Job 38, especially Job 38, the angels are called the sons of God, but Jesus is called the only begotten Son of God. But believers that are born of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament are not called the sons of God until after they're born, of, born again of the Spirit. No human is called the Son of God other than Adam in the Old Testament. Now that's what sons of God or Son of God means. I might even do a, well, I, I do Bible, I got Bible studies on that information if you're interested. But angels are called sons of God in the old, Job 38. Adam's called the son of God. Jesus is the only begotten son of God. And then in the New Testament, believers are adopted as the sons of God when they're born of the Spirit. All right, so. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth. So Mary was cousins with Elizabeth. I wonder if Mary was um, of the tribe of Levi. 
Joseph was of Judah. You know, those are two of the ten, uh, two of the twelve tribes of Israel. You got a merging of the priesthood and the kingship. I I could make a whole a whole study on that. Now remember, Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelation. In Genesis 49, you know, people say, uh, well, nominal churchgoers say that, you know, well, you know, we're, we're New Testament Christians and the Old Testament, that doesn't really apply to us. So they don't bother to read it, but there's a whole bunch of prophecy in that, in that Old Testament. Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Guess what? Prophecy, chapter 49, verse 8. Judah. Now remember, Judah was one of the 12 tribes. He was the tribe of the kings. Judah. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Wow. What does that mean? It means his hand's going to be, well, you know, the neck of your enemies. You know, uh, when you're fighting an enemy, the neck is uh, one of their most vulnerable spots. You want to kill somebody? Get them around the neck. They taught us that in the army. I mean, <laughs> uh, the neck has very little protection, and it's vital. It cuts off the blood to the brain, and you can stop people from breathing. And in the army, they, you know, well, they didn't teach us, but if you were like special forces, you want to kill somebody quick, you snap their neck. Very easy to do, from what I understand. I mean, I'm, I was not special forces. I was a clerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just read about this stuff. I, I didn't actually, yeah. But, uh, you know, if your hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies... He's going to be a, a warlike tribe. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Why are thy father's children? Why are the other tribes going to be bowing down before him? Because he's the tribe of the kings. King David. King Solomon. Judah is a lion's whelp. There's that lion. Lion of Judah. From the prey, my son... Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rise him up, uh, rouse him up? You don't want to rouse up a lion. Verse 10. The scepter. What's a scepter? It's like a staff. And it was something a king would hold as a symbol of rulership. Uh, oftentimes it had the king's seal on it and he would seal correspondence with it. Put the, It's like a, a notary stamp, kind of, in a way. It was a the sign of, you know, he, he would hold, it's like a, a, like you would hold a ruler. In your hand only it was very fancy you know probably made out of gold and jewels and you know and it was a de it denoted rulership I think the uh, England uh, royalty still uses a scepter of course those of us in the USA we don't know about those kind of things so but the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver. Who was the lawgiver? Moses was considered the lawgiver. Moses was not of Judah. Moses was of Levi. You know, he came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments on the tablets of stone written by the finger of God. 
the scepter, the rulership, shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Who's Shiloh? Christ. So the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall be shall the gathering of the people be. When Christ returns in glory, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then immediately after, those that are alive and remain shall be caught up into the clouds with him when he's returning. The gathering of the people shall be. The United Nations gathering the... Uh, the Antichrist over in the Middle East in 48, 1948, that's not, uh, that, that's, that's not the, uh, well, it is, it is the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Uh, the wheat and the tares, you know, the, the tares are weeds. Yeah, yeah. God's gathering the tares to be bundled and burned. Yeah, that's a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, but not the one that the churches try to con us into believing. Now, according to Strong's Hebrew Concordance, uh, Shiloh means tranquility. You know, peace, which is uh, shalom. Uh, it appears one time. There's some uncertainty with the word but from what I understand, uh, when you're talking about tranquility, you're talking peace and quiet. When Christ returns, there's going to be peace and quiet on this earth. It's not going to be wars like there is now. So, so the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall, be, uh, shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. Remember, uh, Christ rode into Jerusalem on a foal of an ass? Oh, yeah. And what is the vine? The vine is Israel. I've done Bible studies on that, too. He washed his garments in wine. Remember, Jesus at the Last Supper said that the, uh, the, the wine represented his blood of the New Testament, the New Covenant. He washed his garments in wine. Remember, white, white garments washed in the blood of Christ in Revelation. And his blood uh, and his clothes, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. I guess I should prove that, huh? Hold on. All right, in Matthew 26, I know we're skipping around, but uh, Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Now, this is the Last Supper. Judas is getting ready to uh, betray Jesus. Verse 27, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I shall not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. See, this is the fruit of the vine jesus blood you know he took the cup gave thanks gave it to them drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins but i say unto you i will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom so there you go all right, let's go to Revelation 7 real quick. Verse 9. 
After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb, and the, all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? You know, arrayed just means uh, dressed as. Which are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? So here, who are these people in these white robes, and where did they come from? Verse 14, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, what are you asking me for? You know the answer to that question. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So, there you go. Blood of grapes, right? Yeah. So, let's go. All right, let's go back to Luke. Boy, I'm just getting started here. I thought I was going to be able to do an hour study here and be done. Duh. It's always like this. Every time I think it's going to be an hour long, it ends up being two or three. All right, uh, Luke 1, 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Yeah, how am I going to have a, a kid when I, you know, I have, we haven't, never, yeah. I, I don't have to give you a biology lesson, I don't think, so. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. Uh, you know, barren as in uh, dry, barren. A desert is barren of plant life, tree life, you know. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now remember this. Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, is six months pregnant. Mary is going to have, be, conceive, conception. So John the Baptist is going to be six months older than Jesus. There's a reason why I'm bringing this up. So, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, now remember, she's never have been with a man, and she's told you're going to have a kid, and his name's going to be Jesus, not Yeshua HaMashiach. And Mary said, verse 38, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. See, Mary didn't question the angel like Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, did. Big difference. Big difference. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Saluted, greeted. And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe, 
John the Baptist, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Wow. Remember, John the Baptist was to be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Now Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice, saying, Elizabeth speaking here, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. See, Elizabeth knew, you know, performance, uh, you know, perform. It means to do something's going to be done. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. You know, Gabriel told her what would be happen from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed or blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arms. He hath scattered the proud, scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent away. He hath sent empty away. He hath holpen, that means that's kind of like helped, he hath holpened, holpened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. So, Elizabeth is was six months pregnant. Mary, you know, Mary goes unto her, stays with her about three months. Six and three is nine. Wow, I must have learned that in college, huh? Two years of college wasn't wasted at all. But, uh, you know, nine months, she's getting ready to, you know, uh, deliver. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. And now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord hath showed great mercy unto her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. And I think that's in the book of Leviticus. Um eighth day they would circumcise a child eight meaning a new beginning you know you had six days in the week the seventh day was the last day of the of the week the sabbath and then on the eighth day would be the beginning of the new week um uh, and it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise a child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. Oh, and by the way, um, you know, uh, when they circumcise a child on the eighth day, it takes about a week for the child's uh, blood clotting ability to be able to, to work. You know, if you circumcised a child right away, they, they, they wouldn't have the blood clotting ability. But it takes about a week. So on the eighth day, the baby is able to, uh, well, the blood is able to clot. 
So when they circumcised a child, you know, that it's a medical fact. You, you can look it up. Uh, a doctor wrote a book on this kind of stuff, and I read that book a long time ago. I gave it away. I wish I wouldn't have, but yeah. You know, I've lost my... Um, my what I call a pastor's library. Three different times I've lost my pastor's library. Three times. Yeah. Lucky me, huh? Oh, well. Hopefully all the info was in my brain. So. All right. So they circumcise the kid and they call him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, not so. But he shall be called John. And everybody's like, and they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by thy name. You don't have any family called by that name. What are you talking about? What do you mean, John? And they made signs to his fathers how he would have called him. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. Now remember, Gabriel had told John in the temple that he was going to be dumb, and he wouldn't be able to speak until the day the child was born. But now he can talk. You know, he's been speechless for nine months, about, approximately. And his mouth was immediate, opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. Boy, I bet you that was a lot of gossip going on. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? Oh, yeah. What kind of kid is this going to be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying. So here it is. <laughs> Zacharias, Elizabeth, and John the Baptist all are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, saying. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. There's holy prophets and there's unholy prophets. Um, the Jehovah's Witnesses are unholy prophets. Yeah. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. God's people have enemies, people. But if you listen to the churches, they'll say, well, you know, God loves everybody. God wants everybody to be saved. A blessing and praise and tithe to me. Yeah, you know, God loves everybody. Praise the Jesus. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. That's church teachings. That's not Bible teachings. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies. Might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. What child? John the Baptist. He's talking to a newborn baby here. 
And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet, feet, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was, and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. And that is the end of Luke chapter 1. I guess this is going to be part 1. You know, every time I think I'm going to be able to do a study in an hour, it, it always ends up being 2 or 3. It never fails. Never fails. There's always so much background information. You know, sometimes I got to think about, well, should I add this? Should I skip over this? Do do it on the next part. You know, the Bible is a woven together book, just like a a, a piece of fabric. All the threads are interconnected. So, all right. Well, this is the end of part one. The life of John the Baptist. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.